Boys, it's time to talk about Intel's last level cache, their X3D competitor once again. I've been thinking about it, running the numbers, and I don't know, I mean, Nova Lake's coming up soon and it might just have it. And well, Intel just revealed Clearwater Forest and it's confirmed to have large amounts of this last level cache. So let's get right into it. Elevate your gaming setup even further beyond with the HND7S monitor arms from Huanu. Guys, I have to say, I didn't think I needed monitor arms until I set these up and I have now fully ascended. These things clear off desk space, allow you to organize your monitor and tilt, swivel, or rotate it, all with an ergonomic design that leaves me kind of wanting to get in my setup even more. I have to say, it elevates your gaming experience, it elevates your workflows. Being able to tilt, swivel, rotate monitor arms in any direction, it's just a godsend, guys. I love it so much. And I think my two favorite things about having these is number one, being able to play in 4K and bring this so close to your face. Like you can literally sit back in your chair and bring your monitor closer to your face. You can see all the details, guys. Even on a 27 inch monitor, it's just great. It is the perfect experience, 4K 240 Hertz this close to your face, I have to say, I'm loving it. And number two, being able to recline in my chair as I would be like in a recliner and just look up at the monitor and have my neck relax. Honestly, the posture for me, it, it's just been great. Now, it might not look great, but for me, it's comfortable gaming like this way. A huge barrier to uh, entry when gaming on a computer is uh, having to actually sit down at your desk and look at your monitor, have good posture. And I think it's just great to be able to sit back recline like you would be console gaming, even on a mouse and keyboard at your desk on a monitor. They're having a Black Friday sale right now, so go ahead and get your deals while you can. Let's get back to the video. Just in case you forgot, Nova Lake is rumored to come out just next year in 2026. And there's some crazy advancements with this architecture. Number one, if you've been living under a rock, it's gonna have 52 cores. 16 of those are P cores, 32 are E cores. And then there's, there's gonna be four low powered E cores, totaling 52 cores and 52 threads. There's no hyper threading on that chip. We aren't as interested today in that top end SKU, only partially. What we're actually interested in is Intel's counter to X3D. There's been some developments um, because I watched High Yield's video and what I saw shocked me, okay? He revealed Clearwater Forest and, you know, these are official Intel slides that they, they've released. And basically what Clearwater Forest has is it's going to have a large last level cache on the compute tile. This is my understanding, right? And out of 24 E cores, it had 48 megabytes of large last level cache. That's, you know, a decent amount, not maybe that much for 24 cores, but they are E cores, right? What interested me from his video, great video, by the way, go check it out, link in the description. They have these active base tiles. We've had base tiles before. We have them in Lunar Lake, Meteor Lake, even Arrow Lake, and they're basically just like a silicon interposer that connects the whole chip together to make it have more monolithic like properties. Well. This, this is totally different. Sure, it does that, but on top, it's adding extra cash to the chip. And this gets me excited because this is the potential I saw with base tiles and silicon interposers all along, where they have this huge silicon interposer built on Intel 3. So it's not some old 20 nanometer node, it's literally a three nanometer class node that they built Clearwater Forest on. And this, <laughs> Three nanometer node has like hundreds of megabytes of cache. I think it was like 100 or like 144 megabytes of cache for one tile. Correct me if I'm wrong. And then across the whole trip uh, chip, it was like 500 megabytes of cache. And that's what I want to talk about today. What are future CPUs going to look like that have that cache? First, I'm gonna actually go into what is rumored and kind of on the Lecosphere for these new uh, Nova Lake CPUs and kind of comparing it to Zen 6 X3D. The first few that we have is the Nova Lake BLLC. That's a big last level cache. This is not cache that's on the silicon interposer, sadly. This is just cache that is added to the compute die, increasing the size of the compute die. It's not 3D stacked, it's just literally a section of the compute die. So this thing is gonna have, uh, 
let's think, 144 megabytes of big last level cache, which is absolutely insane. It's also gonna have eight P cores, 16 E cores, and then four low power E cores. So that's a total of 28 cores, really 24. Those low power cores probably won't do much. And you know, that gets me excited. You know, I, in the past we've looked at this, I've, I've predicted this performance is probably gonna be around 30% faster than Arrow Lake is currently. So that puts it right around a 9800X3D. I could even see this thing, you know, with some overclocking, maybe if there's IPC that scales really well with Nova Lake, getting about 10% faster than a 9800X3D. But I'm gonna say more around 9800X3D competitor, but you're gonna have insane multi-core performance, right? Probably upwards of 20% more multi-core performance than a uh, 285K, maybe even 30%, but you're gonna have that gaming jobs to go along with that with a great iGPU. So cool, that's the Ultra 7. That's just one compute tile, you know, 28 threads, big whoop. You know, I mean, we, we, we've had the 9800X3D for a while. There's a 9950X3D that could probably get you close to whatever this is gonna do. What I wanna talk about is Intel, if they go nuclear, right? <laughs> if they just go scorched earth trying to demolish AMD, they're gonna go dual BLLC uh, dies. And that's gonna do, you know, one chip with BLLC, another chip with BLLC. That is insane. That's insane amount of cash that is 52 cores all with extra cash and i don't know this could put intel back on the map guys it really could right this thing uh people are saying it's gonna have 180 megabytes of last level cash up from 144 i'm not sure why it wouldn't just be double 144 like to what what would that be 288 megabytes of cash that sounds like an unreal level of cash like you could probably load a lot of games in that um, but that would be 52 cores of 180 megabytes of cache madness. Um, I'm, I'm still thinking that would probably just be around 30%, maybe 35% faster in gaming than something like a 285K, but it, it, it could, that extra cores could help in some scenarios, but I'm not really thinking any gaming scenarios where that amount of extra cache and on a whole different chip is going to actually be beneficial. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I just don't think, I think it's kind of a waste of silicon, but not really because you'll be able to have the multi-threaded chops and all the gaming chops to go with it. Because if you give one tile the extra cash and the other tile doesn't get it, then you're gonna get the same problems the 9950X3D is, right? So if you want a chip that an all around or that does everything, it seems like this would be your go-to. And I wouldn't expect this thing to cost any less than $1,000 for what all the hardware it's packing like. And honestly, for the amount of cash you're getting, the amount of cores, I think that would be worth it like to some people. Not to me personally, uh, but uh, to other people, I think that would be pretty good. Now, what about Zen X3D? Zen 6 X3D? Yeah, whatever it's called. Um, <laughs> this thing's gonna have 96 megabytes of cash like of 3D stack cache, plus it's 48 of L3 cache like on the CCD. So that's going to be a significant amount of cache. I'll put that like right here. Um, and that's gonna be a 12 core chiplet. So you have 12 straight P cores with an insane amount of cache, probably insane clock speed versus something like, you know, 28 cores with uh, equal amount of cache, maybe not as fast clocks. You know, it's up in the air who's gonna win this thing. I think overall for gaming, AMD does have a architectural advantage. Just they've been on the chiplet architecture for a little bit longer. They're gonna have this thing ironed out, I think better. It really depends though if their uh, interpretation and adaptation of a silicon interposer is good or not. It really does because, you know, both of these chips, I didn't say this before, is going to have their memory controller off the compute die. Nova Lake will not have its memory controller on the same chip as its cores. That's gonna cause some latency issues. That's gonna cause some performance issues. We already know that does with AMD, but I think if AMD gets a very refi refined silicon interposer, um, you know, it's, it's been rumored to say that they're gonna have the same interposer as Strix Halo, they could see pretty good performance gains. And I'm guessing on AMD with something called a 10800X3D, they're probably gonna see upwards of 20, 25% more 
performance in gaming than the 9800X 3D. So at this point, you're looking at a chip that's probably, you know, 10 to even 20% faster than the Intel's best chip, even with their 3D, or even with their big last level cache. So at this point, you're looking at a chip that's 10 to 20% faster than Intel's big last level cache chip that's probably going to cost a lot of money. So you may be wondering, well, what gives? I mean, why isn't Intel catching up? And I'm just not giving Intel the benefit of the doubt here. I'm not too convinced they're gonna be able to mediate a lot of the latency issues with the chiplet architecture. I mean, this Nova Lake die has like six chiplets on it or like four or five chiplets, you know, and the, the memory controller is off die. I'm just not sure if they've figured that out yet. You know, I'm sure with QDIM memory and some die to die tuning on this thing, you'll be able to get it up there with the X3D chip. I just don't think out of the box it's going to be there. And I think you guys could probably agree with me on that, that maybe out of the box it's not going to match this 12 performance core Ryzen CPU. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. This Ryzen CPU is going to have multi threading. So it's going to have 12 or what is it, 24 threads for that one CCD, while Intel is going to be limited to eight. Uh, P cores on one on one tile. That's only eight threads. I think that could play into a little of the performance gains with AMD, but we'll just have to wait and see there. Now, something else I wanted to point out is Nova Lake is like, like sure, like it's going to be good at gaming, but that's not the purpose of Nova Lake, guys. I mean, we're getting 52 cores. This thing's going to be a workstation monster, and if you don't believe me, well. It's rumored it's gonna have 36 PCIe Gen 5 lanes. Yeah. <laughs> like what, 36? So that's 16 for your graphics card. And what, that leaves 20 for like NVMEs? And I, let's say that you need four for the chipset. So that leaves 16. You could get four Gen 5 NVMEs with that. All right, and we aren't done here. There's also gonna be 16 PCIe Gen 4 lanes. So you could get another for Gen 4 NVMEs. I mean, if all of those are four terabytes, what is that, bro? <laughs> that is uh, 32 terabytes, half Gen 5, half Gen 4 storage of NVMe. Like, that is crazy. I'm really excited for stuff like that. I'm using six NVMEs in my Nova or Arrow Lake build right now and I'm running out of space. Like I need a workstation platform without having to pay workstation prices for their motherboards. Like I, ugh. now not to say these motherboards are gonna be cheap. I'm sure there'll be like $500 or like $400 for a good one. But I mean, you know, this is like an in-game platform guys. Like Nova Lake's an in-game platform for computing. If you get something like the dual big last level cache chip with 52 cores, where do you go from there, right? Unless the IPC and the memory controller severely limits it in gaming, I think that's an in-game chip that you buy and you literally use for 15, 20 years. Like, I'm not kidding. That sounds insane. But we'll just have to wait and see. Where something like a 12-core, uh, you know, X3D Zen chip, I think that would be great. But I think you would want to upgrade that for more threads eventually, right? That's just what I'm thinking here. It might be, you know, the high-end Nova Lake SKU by 15, 20%, but at the end of the day, it's gonna have so much less threads that its versatility overall in computing, I think would be a little bit less, just personally. Yeah, now another thing I wanted to state is Moore's Law is dead. I looked back at his video when he leaked Nova Lake, this was a long time ago, but he said there was plans for this thing called a ELLC cache. I don't know what the E stands for. I think elevated, I'm not sure, but he said that was a, a stacked 3D cache that's scrapped, it's not coming with uh, Nova Lake. And that immediately made me think of back to High Yield's video where he's saying that there's this active base tile that has cache on it. And guys, this is what I wanna talk about. That's the future of computing for Intel. And AMD should be scared because in Moore's Law's dead video, he said that that uh, ELLC cache was planned for Titan Lake. I believe that um, it's going to be Nova Lake, Razor Lake, Titan Lake, and then Hammer Lake. If Correct me if I'm wrong. From Moore's Law's dead leak, there's supposed to be four CPU architectures on the next socket from Intel, and that's the order they're supposed to go in. So that would be, I guess, four years from now or so where Titan Lake would come out. And if they scrapped ELLC, just hear me out, hear me out. What if they replace that with the tile-based 
cache, the active tile base. I don't know what this cache is called. Let's make a name for it. <laughs> you know, that would be pretty cool. What if they build Titan Lake with a silicon interposer on Intel three nanometer, all right? And it adds 100 megabytes of cache just right there, all right? And then we have these same size chips. It could still be built on Intel 18A or TSMC two nanometer. But now instead of using all that extra die space on cache, you just add more cores or you make cores that are bigger. So I think you get something like Titan Lake to like 82 cores. I don't know what kind of programs are gonna be able to have that level of parallelization with CPU threads, but it's a fun thought. It is, it is a fun thought that cache is acting as a uh, silicon interposer and transmitter that all the cores are built on. And I'm just really excited for that. So overall, the CPU competition is heating up like crazy, guys. We have Intel investing in these new architectures, AMD catching up with their IO, and also just doubling down on being a gaming beast. And then Intel investing in a high-end uh, desktop platform for consumers with Nova Lake, and they may just come back and take the crown if they could inter you know, introduce this base tile cache into their architectures as soon as Titan Lake in 2030. So I'm not sure guys, I think that we have a exciting future ahead of us for CPUs. I think that right now you should just hold on to your CPU and wait for Nova Lake, wait for Zen 6, because these are gonna be huge jumps, way better than Zen 5 and Arrow Lake right now. I would say you don't really need to upgrade right now when you're looking at a CPU. I would say get a GPU. Those are at a great price right now and they're likely to increase in price soon. These are exciting and I hope that they aren't delayed too much. I'm having a feeling all these products built on two nanometer are gonna get some major delays. I don't know why, it's just sitting in the back of my head there. And as far as like a CPU launch, right now we are not ready for it with DDR prices increasing daily. And I think it would be disastrous if these CPUs launch now. Who knows in a year from now if it's gonna be any different, if our situation is gonna lighten. I did see that SK Hynix is working, working on some insane uh, LP DDR speeds of like LP DDR6 at like 14,000 mega transfers a second, like that's insane. And then uh, GDDR7 at a uh, 48 gigabit per second, which is like the car, the 5090 has 28 gigabit per second. Like how do we get there that fast? I don't know, that might just be for AI, but yeah, the market's crazy right now. It's fun to look ahead, but hopefully these products can be salvaged for us consumers and it's not all scrap due to AI. That's just what I'm hoping here. I know Intel's gonna be trying to get an AI race and let's just hope they just don't throw consumers to the side like every other company has uh, over and over again. That's just my thoughts, guys. What do you think about Intel's big last level cash? It is, is it something worth waiting for? Or are you gonna be Zen 6 all the way? Let me know. Silicon State, signing out. He's on deck from GPUs to CPUs, he knows it all No question too big, no detail too small He's got the knowledge, he's got the skill When he drops his take, the haters stand still Fanboys can cry, but they can't deny Silicon stakes